Hello, and welcome back to the lab. Today on the bench, we have essentially the bench itself. Um, this isn't a Q&A on this one. We are going to do some troubleshooting, and we're going to get into some cool stuff on this one. Um, for those of you who have followed the channel for a while, thank you for being here. And they will recall that I have struggled with a chirp in the lab that has sometimes really messed with some measurements. And especially when I was working with the SG-505s, the AA-501s, things like that, it was really showing up and it was kind of driving me nuts. And if we go back into the channel, I've been affected by this chirp on and off for quite some time. And I've been trying to narrow this thing down and it has not been going well to narrow this thing down. I had some suspicions, but I could never prove it, and I didn't want to talk to, uh, do a presentation on it until I knew what was really going on in the lab so I could narrow this thing down. Well, I was starting to do some measurements for comparison on my function generator. I just wanted to take a look at some spectral purity stuff on that unit, and I found it. So the goofy thing is, it's on right now, because I just have it warming up for the video, but for the chirp to be present, this unit doesn't even have to be on, and we'll show that here in a little bit. Uh, my HP 3585B is what really showed this up and uh, allowed me to finally find it, troubleshoot it, and dial it home, and drive it home so we could... Uh, get this thing out of the lab. And we're going to get into some future plans and things like that in this video as well. So we're going to have some fun. So, first up, let's see what's going on. Okay, so we have a BNC cable hooked to output 1 of my Rigol DG2102. We're going to use the 50 ohm input on the HP. And we have terminated the 50 ohm. Uh, one of the things that this spectrum analyzer is pretty cool about is it does have 50 ohm, 75 ohm, and 1 meg. That's pretty rare. However, you can already see what's going on. So I don't even have the output of the function generator turned on yet. And we got this weirdness going on. Uh, right now, my center frequency is 1 megahertz, and my span is 1 megahertz. This kind of looks like my HP's lost its mind, or this cable is crap. If I unplug the cable, noise goes away, and the HP is happy. Plug the cable back in, it's going kind of nuts. So what we will do is we will turn on the output. And I have the output enabled for a 0 dBm signal at 50 ohms, and indeed we have a actually pretty nice 0 dBm signal at 50 ohms coming out of the Rigel. But we still have all this weirdness down here at the bottom. So, is my Rigel busted? Does my cable suck? Does my HP need work? This was kind of what was going through my head. Just looking at this based on the measurement, too, we know this isn't expected. So this is out of the ordinary, especially when I can even turn the Rigel off and that this stuff will still be here. We'll take a look at that here real quick. So with the Rigel off, it's still doing it. As you guys can see, Display is dead, everything's off, and I didn't cut that shot on purpose. So the Rigel's off, the BNC's connected, and if I unplug the BNC cable, zoom out so you guys can see what's going on, the noise goes away. So I got a, a source that's off into a receiver that's confused. <laughs> What's going on? Well, let me fire the Rigel back up. It takes a minute to boot, so I'm going to turn the camera off. 
and we'll get the signal back. All right, so we know it shows up with the Rigel when the Rigel's off. Let's see if any other pieces of test equipment can see this, uh, possibly what's going on. Okay, I have the Rigel hooked up to the distortion meter, paying close attention to the bar graph. Now, there's no signal coming out of the Rigel, so a little bit of jumping around is fine. But it's not jumping around in time. So, the AA501 can't see it, but let's hook the input of the AA501, for testing purposes, to the input of the spectrum analyzer. There's a chirp. The AA501 is blinking in time, or is the bar graph is moving in time with the chirp on the screen. So what is going on? Heading back over to the spectrum analyzer, let's reduce the resolution bandwidth and slow down this measurement. Now with the bandwidth reduced, this is going to be a lot slower. That is, that is starting to look very much like a repeating waveform. I'm going to turn the um, Rigel on. Uh, we'll give it zero dBm, no DC bias, and uh, one megahertz. Our center's at one megahertz, so this is. Uh, I'd expect to see some signal about now. There we go. Okay, so we have some nice waveforms around the center. But I got this weird stuff going on. And it does seem to be power supply, or um, electric related. Depending on where I have the plugs plugged in in the lab, I either see this signal and, or I don't. There's a couple of things that immediately sprung to mind, just given the way I have the lab set up. One was I have an energy monitoring system that does use power line networking for some data transfer rates. That was the first thing that popped through my head. This could be common mode noise coming in on either the neutral or the ground line, probably the ground line, and it's messing with the ground reference. As the ground reference is moving, the measurement plane of this device is moving up and down with the with those high frequency chirps on the ground line especially with it being regular like this um, first thing we're going to try is unplugging that power meter well it's changed So I'm still getting weird spikes on the on the noise floor with the power meter unplugged. Now, that coincides to the um, there are two additional modules that go with this setup that uh, are looking for the monitoring computer. Let me unplug them. But, given that this changed, we're on the right track. Well, that's looking a lot better. So, so if we take a look at our non-harmonically related noise, we would be negative 82 dBm down from the carrier. Um, I'm not unhappy with that, especially with it being a digitizing function generator and it not being an analog function generator. Got a little bit of stuff here, but all in all, it's a pretty nice clean signal for a uh, digitizing function generator. But also now this proves out that my spectrum analyzer is okay. We did have some noise measurements on the ground line. So I'm going to need to figure out an energy monitoring system. Go grab this thing. So here is our offending box. Now, this is nothing against the company. Actually, I really like this product. And if I 
I can solve this bit of a problem that I'm having, we're going to get, we're going to reinstall this. So this has a small web server built in, takes a data port, and it's made by a company called the Energy Detective. And what this is, is I installed current transformers in my electric panel. And this thing has, well, I have two main units, and because I have two panels, and they monitor the electric coming in at the top of the panel, but then it has a, what they call spiders, which took the main channel, branched it out into up to 16 circuits. So you could put a current transformer and you can monitor up to 16 different electrical loads at the breaker panel and just see what things were drawing. Now it was wildly useful for troubleshooting some electric issues that I was having in the house with a high utility bill. Uh, and also it let me keep an eye on a couple of things like the server rack that runs the lab. Let me keep an eye on the, um, keep an eye on some of the lab circuits itself. Uh, there's four 20 amp circuits for the lab. And uh, anybody who knows anything about industrial power and electric, I really don't want to pay for 80 amps of power. <laughs> so I was watching what the bench was doing. Um, Shariard even had this problem over at the signal path where he ended up putting um, power strips on in some of his zones in his lab because his standby power, he was burning a kilowatt a kilowatt hour of standby power just keeping the crystals and the OCXOs and everything hot in the RF equipment. That is a tremendous amount of RF equipment, but it was happening. So I just want to keep an eye on it to help keep the power bill from getting out of control because energy costs are going up and the power bill can get kind of nuts pretty quickly. Uh, it also gave me an estimated bill, so it would tell me, I told it what my billing date was and it would reset and it knew the months and things like that. So it was a really nice unit, had a little web page on it and I used it quite often. And when I wasn't troubleshooting something, it sat in the corner and just recorded data for me. But, um, so can't have this messing around with measurements. So now I have to do something. I'm going to have to change. Good news is the energy detective is coming out with a unit 2.0. So I'd love for it to have Ethernet or something like that, get it off of the power line networking, because that would save the noise that I was having on my, um, on my spec an. But I won't be able to use this when I'm doing sensitive measurements in the lab, and that's going to mess up the data, so I'm going to have to leave this unplugged for a little bit. The other really cool thing was there was thresholds, so you could get a real quick glance of how the, how the building was using electric yellow, green, red was on it. And if I fired something up like an electric dryer, it would obviously be red because it would be dumping kilowatts. Um, and then on normal usage, we could you could set the thresholds for when you knew you were burning a little bit of power and running the meter a little faster than you may have ultimately wanted. So pretty neat box. This is not a dig on the Energy Detective at all. This unit is working as designed and there's no problems with it. However, given my use case and the fact that the lab has grown and the measurements have gotten more sensitive, this is now interfering with measurements, so I'm going to have to upgrade to version 2. Version 2 should be out pretty soon. They haven't said exactly when, but if it doesn't use power line networking, I'll pick one up and we'll get it installed and uh, show you guys what the interface looks like. But for now, I'm going to have to leave this unplugged, turn the breaker off, decommission it, and uh, we'll go from there. But uh, I finally found the chirp. All right, and because I have a toddler that can reach the ceiling, also known as the lab cat, here's what was removed. These were the power cables that went into the modular units, and these terminated in a junction box over by the electric panel. So I had to disassemble the junction box and get these stripped out and taken away. I am comfortable working on mains electric. It is not something that should be done lightly. 
the um, I did take all the rec rec requisite safety precautions in when working on mains electric, and I have a pretty deep experience working in industrial systems and things like that. So definitely, I'm comfortable working on this stuff. If you're not comfortable, don't work on it. Anything in an outlet can be fatal, especially when they're 15, 20 amp outlets. That's that's very easily enough to to be fatal. So if you're not comfortable, get some help, get some stuff done, and keep the injuries to a minimum. For the electricians that may have stumbled on this video uh, because of the YouTube algorithm, the appropriate amount of swearing over the electric box was done to make it a proper job. <laughs> so it was fine. For the... Uh, however, I did not get shocked in the process. So, after removing the noise source, the measurement has settled down. This is going to tighten up the measurements in the lab, definitely help on the distortion analyzer and a few other things, and go from there. Thanks for stopping by the lab and taking a look at the noise chirp that we've been fighting for probably a couple of years to really narrow this down. I, uh... It was an intermittent, and it was coming and going, depending on how I had things plugged in and a few other things, which made troubleshooting this particular issue in the lab quite difficult. But in the end, once we got a way to visualize it and measure it, it was easy to find, locate, and eliminate. If you're liking this content, hit this type of content. Hit the subscribe button, the bell, and all the YouTube buttons. Take a look at the Patreon page. Patreons are running about five videos ahead. All the videos will end up on YouTube eventually, but there is nothing behind the paywall, and uh, patrons who are up there have supported the channel, and their support to the channel helps more than anybody knows, and I'm eternally grateful for all of that. So, check out the Patreon page if you'd like some more content. If not, as always, more is on the way, and I will see everybody in the next video.